Reverend Gordon Linney is a canon of St. Patrick's Cathedral. The church here was closed mainly because of the movement of people out from this area to the suburban areas. And by 1975, it was clear that the church was no longer needed. It was one of a number of churches closed in this area. This church was built in the year 1708. It was built to meet a uh, need of growing population, which was largely the result of the influx of Huguenot people in the 17th and 18th century. These were people who came from France, and many of them settled here in Dublin, particularly in this area. And they were mainly uh, famous for their skills in the weaving industry. They settled here and in fairly large numbers, and this church was built to accommodate them. It reflects, to some extent, the poverty of the people because in its early years it was a very simple and plain building. Someone described it as a dark, ugly barn. But in fact, uh, as they prospered to some extent, so the church was improved and the chancel was added in the late 19th century and this porch here behind me was also added and a number of other features inside like the West Gallery and the organ. Perhaps the most famous of the churches would be St. Catherine's in Thomas Street, which was uh, closed in the mid-60s. The building is important architecturally and was restored by the corporation during the European uh, Architectural Heritage Year. It is a very impressive building and of course some important historical associations, particularly with Robert Emmett who was executed just outside the church. Further along from St. Catharines or St. James's, uh, this was a church, a very ancient parish, uh, the parish of St. James's, but the church itself was a 19th century building and it had got to the stage where there were very few people living in the area, the Church of Ireland tradition, and it was no longer needed. It was sold by the Church of Ireland, I think in the early 60s, um, and I think it's used as uh, wholesale grocers. Here in the city of Dublin, the main problem has been the movement of population out to the suburban areas. One looks at what 20 years ago were little villages like Clondalk and Talla, Leeslip. These are now major centres of population. And in fact, it's the scheme of reorganisation is partly intended to enable the church to meet the challenges out there of, of growing populations and providing adequate manpower and parochial buildings and schools and so on. The negative side of that has been the problem we have here in the city of redundant churches and that is really the main factor in the closing of these churches, the movement of population. This isn't a new problem by any means. Uh, you could go within half a mile of where we're standing and find probably anything up to ten sites of old churches in Dublin that have been closed and many of them long since forgotten. There's an interesting church in Swift Sally, it was known as Swift Sally Church, and that was in use up to the late 19th century. It was used as an overflow for St. Catharines and Thomas Street, and uh, that has been converted to another use. I think it's some kind of factory, and there is a, there has been a story added to it. We must never forget that we have responsibility for the people who are left here, and in trying to meet that situation we have retained two churches in the areas, St. Catherine and St. James's Church in Denor Avenue, which is was built at the in the 1890s, and we've also got St. Audouin's at Corn Market, which is probably the oldest church building in Dublin. And another an interesting factor is that there is a move back into the city areas, particularly the South Circular Road area, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that develops in the years ahead.